Sunday. I was about to say Saturday. Good Lord. Hi. A uh, what it is, yo. A uh, what's up? All right. Let me make sure I'm as bright as I can be. Hi, sis. Hey, Sharon. I'm good. Thank you for coming by. So, I finished the 100 envelope challenge. Oh, and I got my nails done. What do y'all think? I was channeling my inner Lauren budgets with these nails. <laughs> So yeah, thanks. So I figured, I figured we count it. Or if we're not counting it, at least um, take the money out of the envelopes, you know? But part of it broke, like this part came off. So when I called myself adding up everything, I had devel uh, developed, I had got a total of what I think is in here, but I definitely want to count to make sure, you know? So, it is like jammed packed in here, like, oh my god. You want to see how much I saved? Well, I'm definitely going to start taking out and counting for sure let me put my calculator up here I'm trying to give myself all this space because I have my cash tray here as well once my desk gets overwhelming so this is the first one that I opened Second one. This is a uh, Mr. Grant, Alexander Grant. Ugh. So it's hard to sheesh, get them out. So I have to look back. I don't remember yet. Oh, hi, Bess. So, Bess, I filled up my hundred envelopes. So now I'm taking the money out and I'm going to count. I've only taken out three so far and I got my nails done. Channeling my inner Lauren budgets. I don't know if you guys watch Lauren budgets, but. She always has um, this type of style of nails with like a cute design on it. So, Mel, hi, Cece. Oh my God. So, I've taken out three already. So, y'all. The question is, like, for real deal, Holyfield, what to do with this money? Like, that's the question. 
what to do with the money. I have a couple of ideas. And right now, I'm just going to take the money out and just, you know, get it in some kind of order. Um, I think it took me maybe four months emergency fund and if not used by next year take it to london that's a good idea um i don't know so this is part of what i was thinking a part of me wants to just have it in my emergency fund period and just I seen even saving for Italy too. Yeah. Um, a part of me wants to just um save it in my emergency fund because you guys know I really am looking hard for a new job and I haven't found one yet. And I'm not speaking termination over my life per se, but like y'all know the situation with my job. So I feel like I'm not I feel like I'm not stable mm -hmm. as far as the job goes. Um, so I don't know. A part of me was thinking um, to put all of the money towards my emergency fund. Um, then I was thinking of doing half for sinking funds. The other half um, in the emergency fund. I'm not sure. But it's still packed, y'all. And I done took out like all of these so far. It's still packed. I'm excited though. Um,. So, yeah, I don't know, you guys. <sighs> but I'm proud that I was able to keep keep up with this. Dag, I feel like I'm giving myself the biggest paper cut. I feel like um, I'm proud of myself. That's what I was saying. I'm proud of myself that I was able to keep up with this challenge and, like, see it to fruition because if you know me consistency is a really big thing for me as far as to continue to do it so I don't know don't know it there sheesh it just makes me wonder like if I get a hundred envelopes right and just label all of them fifty dollars like I would have some bank for real So I have uh, four piles. I don't have my, I didn't get any ones yet to start that pile, but here we go. I spoke, spoke it up. I got some ones here. So with this hundred envelope challenge, what I did was I labeled these fives, tens, um, fifties and twenties. So that's pretty much, you know, what you're going to see. Then I was like, do I want to purchase a deep freezer with this money? Do mm -hmm. I want to get some stuff that I might need? I seen you. Oh, 
I'm not seeing any comments. Are y'all just not talking? <laughs> the last comment I saw was about Italy. And I'm sorry if y'all hear stuff on my phone. Tara sent me a video, an audio message. I'm telling you, I will never get tired. My arms will never get tired taking money out of envelopes. That is actually my money. <laughs> Buy yourself something nice with the money. <laughs> like what? What should I buy? But see, the way that my... <laughs> That's you. You know, sis. Look, honey. Are you tired? Nope. I could do this all day. For real, look at these 50s stacking up and these 20s. Y'all, I got ketchup on my shirt because I ordered out tonight and I wasn't supposed to. I'm so bad. I could play. I can, it, Girl, I can play in envelopes every day too. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I will literally open up my sinking funds and just be like this. Count it. Say money affirmations. I am wealthy. I am rich. I am that female dog. And just do it and just put it right back. And just be chilling. Like, that's fun for me. Y'all, we still got a lot of ways to go. Woo! You guys, I wonder how long it's going to take. That's all right. Look, I ain't got nowhere to go. I ain't got no company coming. I got my door locked. Oh, this was 10 ones. And that's another thing. The ones and fives challenges, once I was like, I don't know. I get in these, I get in these moods where I'm like, okay, I'm going to save my ones, right? And I'll do really, really well. And then it seems like I get bored with that. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and put the money and, you know, fill some envelopes. But I don't know what to do with the money. Oh, that's what it is. It's a hangnail right here, y'all. Ugh. And I keep hitting it every time I grab an envelope. Ooh, I know. Girl, do it hurt. It's starting to. You know, it seemed like. The worst pain in the world. I've never been in labor ever. So I don't know about that. But to me, <laughs> the worst pain in the world is a paper cut. Or when you hit your toe or your foot on the end of your bed. If you used to have the metal bed with the metal rail in, John. You know what I'm talking about? Am I showing my age? You're making me want to do this 100 envelope challenge. I'll be saving mine for a down payment for my own place. You said definitely. <laughs> okay, Kylie. Definitely labor. And that's another thing. Like, I was starting to save for a down payment for my own place. Y'all seen, if you, you know, watch my videos a lot, you see I have the envelopes for it. Um... I started doing that, but once I started to get, like, the fear of losing my job, I was just like, I'm not ready for this right now. And I kind of go back and forth a lot about that. Like, I think once I get a better job and feel secure and settled, then I'll be in a better headspace to start to put money towards, um, you know down payment on a home shoes I should have labeled hundreds for some of these 
but we good. We're gonna stick to we're gonna stick to where we at. We alright. <laughs> Definitely labor. Okay. I hey. I I believe you, sis. I've been watching um, The Residents, and they've been having snippets on Facebook, and my friend ended up telling me that it's on Amazon Prime and on YouTube TV. Now, I don't have YouTube TV, but I got Amazon Prime, so you already know, after I watch Power tonight, I'm binging. I need to apply for some more jobs, though. Alright. Y'all want to see where I'm at right now? Let me show you. Alright, this is where I am. That is where I am. I will say, like, being disciplined is so important, but it's hard. But I never, I'm proud that I never borrowed from myself. Because y'all know, I go in the envelope quick and order something to eat. <laughs> that, that sounds so, so fat, y'all. That sounds so fat. That is such a fat girl statement. I'll order something to eat real quick. Woo. I do not know what to do with this money. And it's starting to give me anxiety that I don't know what to do with it. getting somewhere now the envelopes are starting to move around so I think what I'm going to do with this box um well I don't know if I can because this part on the other side mm -hmm is broken so I don't know I was going to give these envelopes to my friend I mean I guess I still could but she'll just have to get a little box for them and just tell her they're already labeled or she can take the labels off because I paid my money for these oh my god you guys the hangnail look at that oh I keep hitting it. So what are y'all having for dinner today, tonight? Girl, put a Band-Aid on it so it won't snag on money. Do I have a Band-Aid? Do I have a Band-Aid? Let me check and see if I got a Band-Aid. Let me go see. One second. Do I have a Band-Aid?
Bess, you are a lifesaver. You are a lifesaver, sis. Bam. Hey, guys. Whoever just came on, Bess just saved my whole life. Like, I owe her my life because I was going to pass out in a second. <laughs> India! Um, so what am I doing? I am counting my, well, I'm not counting yet. I'm taking out. The hundred envelopes that I had, yo, what is going on? Hold the phone. Hold up. Come on. Y'all, I done messed the dag on. Like, look at that. Come on. I don't got time. Hold up, y'all. Struggles. I'm on the struggle bus. This dag on band-aid done did what it wanted to do. It, it's coming off. You know what? I don't have time. All right. Y'all. All right. It's doing what it need to do. I got my nails done, India. I said I was channeling. I was channeling my inner Lauren budgets. And you too. Because you always get your nails done. Girl, look. I'm just all over the top struggling. Look, the daggone band-aid. <sighs> Thank God there's no blood. But anyway. So I am, look at the, really, um, I got a hangnail, y'all, look, I don't got time for this, look, let me get this money out, so, <laughs> India, um, I finished the 100 envelope challenge, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with the money, um, I did not do mine the traditional way. I labeled mine um, with fives, tens, twenties, and fifties. So, yes, I feel I feel so proud of myself that I finished. Like for real. And this is like stacking up too. Okay. I'm I'm just excited to count. I think I know how much it is, but I'm excited to count. So India, how's Harlem? As you know, she's the star of your channel. Put the money towards whatever you want to pay off or towards a vacay. I need a vacay. I just don't. My thing with vacations, I don't have a whole lot of friends as an adult. And the friends that I do have, they have children and have, they're in relationships. So like. With me being single, I oftentimes feel like the third wheel or if I do hang out with them, I don't want to be the one to like chill with the kids. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I don't like, I don't like going places by myself. Right, LOL, Harlem is good. She's in gymnastics. Oh, oh, Nisi's in gymnastics. I'm I'm the honorary auntie, okay. Tell tell her mom. Is her mom your sister? Tell her mom she has some honorary aunties on your YouTube channel. So I definitely, okay, I definitely want to treat myself to something, but like, 
I don't want to break the bank treating myself to something either. You know? Yo, I do not know how to act. Oh, look, that one broke. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm like really feeling like treat myself to something nice and put the rest in my emergency fund in case it hits the fan with work. Again, because I'm currently out on leave right now and they're trying to say that they didn't approve me because they didn't receive the paperwork. Now, in my defense, the paperwork wasn't sent to me. So, I'm like, can you tell me the email address that you have on file? Y'all, they had, they spelled my name wrong on the email address. So, I'm like, oh, well, that's not how you spell my name. So, how was my name spelled wrong when you got my name correct on the other form? So she's like, oh, well, we're sorry about that. Once we receive the paperwork and everything from your doctor, then we'll open your case back up. It shouldn't have even gotten to that point. Like, you should have sent my paperwork to my doctor anyway. Like, I don't know. I, I, I really need to be my own boss, honestly. But I don't know how to go about it. These are fives. And I just, I get frustrated. Like, you know, common sense should be that common. But unfortunately, it's not for some folks. Then I was thinking about um, stuffing my sinking funds and like stuffing my savings accounts that I have, you know. Give some to myself. I don't know you guys. But I work with a good business coach named. Okay. Doing what? Whatever. Would it be like YouTube or whatever my interest is in? Or, you know? DM me her info, sis, because I will definitely reach out. Okay. Um, and that's another thing, like, because I already have, um, hey guys, to whoever just came on, I finished my 100 envelope challenge and I am just taking the money out and just compiling them and then... Once I get them sorted, it is going to be time to count. And huh, I pray I can count as ever, however high this money is. But yeah, like I have an LLC already. It's just, it's called Creative Consulting um, LLC with two Ks. Because, you know, my name is spelled with a K. And... Um, I used to always say back in the day, bars, y'all, y'all getting these rhymes. But anyway, I used to always say, okay, KKK. <laughs> so that's where creative consulting, you know, by Crystal came about. But 
what I want to do, the ideal, you know, business is to teach people how to budget and save money, kind of like how we do here on our channels. And, okay. And, um... Oh, okay. Okay. So, the ideal business or what I would like to do is to teach people how to budget and save how we do our videos here. Um, and I'm hesitant or my fear is not finding people that you know, are willing to pay for my services. Oh. Look at all these ones, man. Some stripper would be happy. A male stripper, that is. But, um... Yeah. Come through 50s. <laughs> okay. Dag, I wish I would have had some hundreds in here. Also, I have <laughs> been feeling conflicted again about my YouTube channel like you talk about in, in your videos I've been feeling conflicted again um oh man let me be careful oh we um put this hold up this is what I'm about to do hold up y'all let me just switch 20s I know I will spend this. Cool. All right. Still here watching, just trying to wash these couch covers on a Sunday. Girl. I know that's right. But yeah, so my fear is, and I feel bad that I'm even saying that it's a fear because I should not have fear in my heart, but I'm being transparent and honest. My fear is not being able to find people that will want to pay for my services for the business. You know what I'm saying? So that's my dilemma. Getting down to the wire. I think it took me like four. I, I want to say I could be lying, maybe five months. I'm gonna have to look because um I have to look on Etsy because I ordered this hundred envelope set from um, somebody on Etsy and I have to look to see when it was delivered to me 
I believe I started the day that I got it sent to me. So. Hey guys! To those that just joined, I actually finished my 100 envelope challenge and I am just separating the money in their respected denominations and I have just completed bam all right here is where we are this is everything I got my calculator here. <laughs> All right, y'all want to take a guess of how much you think it is? First, let me just show you. This is a stack of 20s. I don't know. Is it me or is it like when you save money, you get a lot of 20s more than anything? This is the 50s. This is the ones. This is the fives. And this is the tens. How much y'all think I saved filling up these hundred envelopes? India's guess is 1050 Okay. Cali Girls said 1357 All right. Hey, Shauna. Shauna says 1500 Hi. Or cat. I finished my hundred envelope challenge and I literally just took all the money out and separated it. So everyone's making their guess of how much um, they think I saved. I look comfy, girl. Yes, sis. I'm anemic. I'm severely anemic. So. I get cold easily. All right. Oh, you think 2300? Okay. All right. What should I start counting first? Should I do the ones to get them out the way? And I got my cash tray right here to put the money in. So as I count, yes, the ones. All right. We can start with the ones. Woo. Lord. Mm. Hold up, y'all. Father God, come to you humbly as I know how. Lord, I just want to thank you for giving me the drive and the consistency to do this 100 envelope challenge. I pray that you give me the drive and the consistency to do many more saving challenges. And may this money grow abundantly in the form of of a new job that I just interviewed for, Lord, in the amount of $90,000. Let this money grow. Amen. All right, hold on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, amen. <laughs> I'm here. That was my cousin calling me, probably calling to see if his car is okay. Because he's got his car parked outside in my parking lot. Ugh. Hold on, you guys. Um, how 
can I hold up? Hold up, guys. Here, I'm here. We here. I'm here. I just had to text my cousin that I was filming a video and I will call him back. Dude, did you not get my text? Hold on. I'm going to call you back. Yeah. I didn't cook nothing. No. Alright. Alright. Alright, y'all. I told y'all he wanted if y'all heard me talking to him, I told y'all he wanted to know what I cooked. I ain't cooked nothing. I ordered out. Okay. All right, y'all still with me? Put a one up if you still with me because that's what I'm about to start with. One is the loneliest number that you ever seen. All right, India's still here, okay. All right. Let's get started. We done said our prayer. All right, so let's see. Let me just. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty. So we got forty. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. Ninety-five dollars and ones. That took up two slots. So we got ninety-five dollars and ones. Cool. All right, what you want to count next? Fives? Fives or tens? Hey, to who, whoever just came on, I'm counting the money that I had from my 100 envelope challenge. Five, ten, fifteen. Look, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty, forty five, fifty, fifty five, sixty, sixty five, seventy, seventy five, eighty, eighty five, ninety, ninety five, one hundred. Ninety 
105, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 200. Two hundred five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty thirty five forty forty five fifty fifty five sixty two hundred and sixty and fives. It's not even fitting in the slot. I said two sixty and fives, right? Now move on to the tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Hold up. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260. Two sixty and tens. All right. Let's see. Twenty. 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300, 320, 340, 360, 380, 400, 420, 440, 460, 480, 500, 520, 540, 560, 580, 600, 600, 620, 640, 660, 680, 700, 720, 740, 760, 780, 800, 820, 840, 860, 880, $880 in 20s. And now for fifties. All right, here we go. Fifty, fifty, one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, and fifty, and fifty. Y'all still with me? Let's see how much I got. Let's see, 95 and ones plus 260 and fives plus 260 and tens. Okay, plus 880 and twenties. Plus six 
50 and 50. I done messed up. Hold up. I messed up on a calculator. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Plus 260. Okay. 880 plus 650. $2,145 is what I have. Wow. Wow. I say is wow I have no clue what to do with this money I feel so conflicted wow $2,145 probably saved in like four or five months wow Wow. I am like over the moon. Little I'm I'm very proud, not a little proud. I'm a little overwhelmed. That's what I meant to say. Yes. And now it made me wish that I would have done it the regular way, you know, by labeling them 1 through 100 and doing it like that. But that's okay. Because, behold, the new $100 envelope challenge with them labeled on the back with the most gorgeous prints ever in life. And it comes with this beautiful 100 envelope challenge tracker. Yeah, India, you should. It's, it's, I will say it's rewarding when you finish. <laughs> I'll say that. Like, it's very rewarding. And then I also have the different 52-week challenges. So this one I would save $5,000. This one I would save $1,250. This one I would save $2,500 using these envelopes. 52. I got the cute little watercolors. So I'm thinking about starting again. Um, honestly, I probably will start again once um, I get a, another job, a more stable job. That's probably when I'll start. But um, once that happens, India, if you want to do it with me, let's go, sis. Look, I'm disciplined now, even though I just used my credit card. <laughs> to pay my uh, debt but I mean not to pay my debt to order some food but we ain't talking about that conversation <laughs> so I can't believe it $2,145 sheesh absolutely just let me know when you want to start do you have envelopes already India What to do with this money? What would you do with it? I, I, I don't know. Because I feel like I have so many different needs right now. Like, um, you know, 
No fancy envelopes, but I can. Yep, and I had plain envelopes at first. I surely did. But I think I'm really about to get back on the grind with saving because my emergency fund is at like $450. And that was because I had to pay a $500 deductible um, when the apartment got flooded. Oh, girl, you will put this money to debt. I mean, that sounds good. <laughs> Look, that sounds like the perfect way to go. Um, what else was I going to say? And I ended up lending my mom like $500. So she's going to start paying that back to me this Friday, actually. So I'll put that money back. But yeah. Um, I feel like I do. I don't know. Um. I don't know. I feel like I do want to, um, you know, put one month of expenses in, you know, in the cash envelope. Um, and that's only eight hundred and seventy nine dollars, which is pretty much um, all the freaking 20s. Well, it's probably like maybe nine mm, between eight seventy nine and nine hundred. But that's like all the 20s. But I don't know, you guys. Oh. <sighs> do something for yourself and put the rest to wherever yeah and then i'm really thinking about our trip too um i do have the money already to to fill out the paperwork to get my passport do you have your passport already i have the paperwork for the passport um and then like i feel like i want to do that trip in increments like first i want to get the passport then i want to research to see how much a plane ticket will be um once we decide what season we're gonna go you know what i'm saying and then save the money for that um you got your passport too hey y'all and you know what um, I don't, the reason I don't have a passport is because, you know, growing up in the hood and not having a lot and everything like that, um, I'm not going to say I was conditioned that I would never be able to, like, leave the country, but I will say it was strongly enforced that, you know, I wouldn't, um travel but like you know now as an adult I want to be able to do that out of the country rat anyway we love to travel so my son got his when he was eight <laughs> now how long did it take for the paperwork and stuff like once you filled out the paperwork how long did it but see I guess I can't I mean I can ask it but like I guess I can't ask because that was pre-covid you know what I mean like I feel like COVID has such a delay with everything these days, you know? Hi, Chris! <laughs> Chris, you my sister from another mister, man. I love your personality. I love your spirit. Oh, it took two weeks? Okay. It's good. Form of federal ID. It's great to have in case, but I understand that. I never thought in my life. Yeah, like, oh, this, yeah, this is your first time on YouTube Live. Yes. I come live all the time. I love chatting with you guys. Um, I just finished the 100 envelope challenge and I counted all my money. Oh, man, how much did I say it was, y'all? I done unpacked all the money. So I counted it. Um, I mean, I have the denominations here, but I think it's. I ended up saving $2,145. $45. I think that's what it was. Right now, Chris, 
What do I do with it? Oh, and you and Bree's uh video was too cute, honey. When she said she ain't know where uh cash money taking over for the nine nine in the two thousands, man, girl. I felt you when you gave Miss Ma'am that look. Okay, I said uh she don't know. I was wait. I was waiting for the song. I was waiting for the song to come on so I could show y'all what I was working with. Okay. I can't twerk, but you can't tell me that when that song come on. <laughs> I shake what my mama gave me. You almost died on the she said she almost died on the table. She was like, it's a song. <laughs> You know that doom, 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 doom. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, all love. Exactly. It's all love. Y'all. But those questions, y'all, y'all did that. Asking them the questions. I was like, wow. But not only that, like, I really enjoyed it because one, you got to meet a fellow sister. I call you guys sisters, bros, but you got to, um, you know, we got to learn more about you and got to see your personality. You know what I mean? I see that the budget is starting to collab with each other more and more. Yes. And I love that. Definitely saw that McBun yesterday and can't stop thinking. Good. Y'all. So before I started to do budgeting on my channel, I was a booktube channel. And before I started booktube, I was a mukbang channel. So there are videos of me with like so many views. Like eating seafood. You know, a seafood boil. Oh my god, yo, yo, girl got dimples. <laughs> it's about time. Yo, look at that. <laughs> yo. Yo, they they really coming through. Don't mind me. Budget brethren's right. And you just get to see more of the personality. Like, especially, um, bring back the books. Let me tell you, Chris, I'm about to do a sales pitch, okay? I will bring back books on my channel if you buy one of my books i am an author i've been writing since i was 15 years old i write in just about every genre there is you said you'll buy it right now girl hi Celessa. go on amazon and type crystal you know how i spell my name k with the o type crystal or type crystal digs and you will see all of my books. Oh, I told you. Okay, you said you didn't want to be that nosy. Girl, be nosy. Be extra nosy. Be nosy, girl. I don't have an affiliate link. I never got into that. I guess that's bad, huh? So, Celissa, I finished the 100 envelope challenge, as you know. And I counted all the money already. I wasn't trying to be rude because people out here are all personal. Girl, let me tell you. I am public. You so late. You gonna spend money? Hey, I'm public as they come. I am. If you Google my name, you will be like, oh my God, you did what? You did you did what? You used to do that? Oh my god. I'm a very public, public, what do they call it? Not a public figure, but a public figure. I mean, I ain't autograph worthy. Yet. Well, I think I'm autograph worthy. I might not be to you, but you know, if somebody asks me for my autograph, I'm quick to be like, yup, here you go. Yes. Oh my, I love writing urban fiction. You should. You should. I used to have a writing channel where I would 
give people tips on how to write but let me tell y'all when I did my first couple videos I had I was so bold in my hairstyle at the time that I dyed I didn't dye my hair I had a weave and I thought it was burgundy and the weave turned out to be this color pink you guys and it was the most hideous, hideous thing. I, yeah, actually, India, hold on. Let me show you real quick. Uh, I mean, I still, still hit me up. Like, I still assist. But I had, I wrote a book on how to write a book. It's called the the Crystal Method. It's actually where I got my fifth U fifth U YouTube name from. So it's called the Crystal Method, an easier approach to getting your words out. And I give examples. I go into so much detail. Um, I give examples based on one of my own books that I wrote. So yeah, I have a Christian fiction. Yeah, it's all on Amazon. Yep. A Christian fiction called Worth the Wait. I have a young adult book called Jawbreakers. This was based on like one of my favorite movies back in the day called Jawbreakers. I don't know if y'all have seen it, but I absolutely loved, loved it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a book about a gang. So, yeah. But um, I've written 22 books. Uh, I've ghost, I ghost write from time to time. I've ghost written maybe mm, seven out of the 22. But y'all, I just love, I just love filling this money. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Come here, poo, -poo. I knew he couldn't be away from me too long, y'all. Whatever room I'm in, RJ has to just be there. Thanks. You love Jawbreaker? Girl, it's iconic. So iconic. Remember the girl? She was like, her name, I think, I think in the movie, her name was either Fern or she said her name was Violet. And they like pimped homegirl out. It was like the mean girls before there was a mean girls. I'll say that. Like, would you agree? Would you agree best? The Jawbreakers movie is, can, is like the mean girls before it was a mean girls. No, I just got to fill this money. In my hands and let it multiply in my mind and let it come to fruition for real hi RJ you need some money yes I can't believe it that movie <laughs> wasn't that movie insane so you guys, from my 100 envelope challenge, I saved a total of $2,145. Yes. Yup. Yup. It was the yup, it was the OG Mean Girls. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yup. So, I wrote about my own, you know, rendition I guess if you will but I don't know you guys I don't know what to do with this money Ooh, excuse me I don't know why I'm tired I didn't do anything domestic today i didn't cook dinner i ended up ordering out and i wasn't supposed to
Where are you at, Pooh? Come here, Pooh Pooh. Your aunties want to see you. Where are you at? Hi, Pooh. Oh. Hi, there you is. What's up? Hi, what's up? Say hi to your aunties. Say hi, aunties. Say hi. Let's move that plastic out the way of the cords. Say hi. Ah, uh, there him is. Say what's up, guys. Oh, you want to go in your house? Oh, you got the moderator. Oh. Okay, let me give you a little backstory on the moderator. So, while I was a mukbang channel, I actually developed a stalker on YouTube. And the stalker, I had made a moderator on my YouTube channel. So, a lot of you guys, meaning subscribers, would always be like, yo, like, this person that's a moderator, when you look at, because he made videos too. He didn't make mukbang videos, but he made like some other weird videos, but he made videos too. And he was like, um, a lot of subscribers was like, yo, Crystal, such and such got like pictures of you in his house. And I'm like, pictures of me? And I would see, I would go on the video I saw split it up the money. Huh? Oh, you say oh, you say split up the money? Okay. So what happened was, right? I would look at his videos, you guys, and no lie, like the painting that I have of myself right here. He had the real picture too. And he had it like on his wall and then it was like pictures from like my Facebook page he had like printed out in colored ink and like had it on his wall and like I comment a couple times and I'm like um why do you have pictures of me like what are you doing and he would always say like oh my god crystal you're so beautiful and you know how i always be like oh i'm single or blah 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 and he would be like oh i would take care of you like you wouldn't have to work if you don't have to and now a lot of things are public knowledge right so with me being a writer um, I'm kind of public knowledge aside from like, you know, where I live and my phone number and everything like that. Like that stuff is private. But like, if you Google me, you'll see, you know, and I'm not bragging when I'm saying this, but you'll see, um, a lot of the things that I did. Like I used to write for CNN. Um, a lot of my articles that I used to write for CNN went extremely viral, um, you know, I have a blog, I have my YouTube channel. So like when you Google me, like all of that stuff pops up. And when you Google me and when you put images, like any type of picture that I've had, whether I've had it with like, you know, a fan of my work or a celebrity that I met from working with them or whatever the case may be, like, you know, if they share it, you know, it's all public knowledge. So I understand where he got the pictures from like it didn't creep me out that he had my pictures or whatever it was just like why the heck do you have it and when I was heavy into reading I wanted a book called Warm Peace by Leo Tolstoy and he was like oh you know I'll send you the book mind you I never thought anything creepy of him until some of the subscribers was bringing it to my attention so he was like, oh, I would love to send you, you know, a book that you want. Can I have an address of where to send it to? So I didn't send him my address to where I reside. I sent him an address to where 
it wasn't my address but I was you know able to pick up whatever it is he was sending so he ended up sending War and Peace and it was like a collector's copy like this collector's copy if it didn't get destroyed in the flood would have been worth some money within like the next 20 years or so right and he ended up sending it to me and it was just like hey um you know i wanted to get you this copy of book i really hope you enjoyed it from so and so like the note wasn't weird or anything but um i would notice on his videos i would see yes i would see like how i'm talking like this how i'm live with y'all he screen recorded my live so like for example chris how you're looking at me right now on youtube you could have a camera and be recording me just like this on your camera and of course of course i know nothing about it because i don't know what you're doing you know what i'm saying like you're home i don't know what you're doing you know what i'm saying so i didn't know anything of it until i saw the screen recording on one of his videos and I just heard I heard my voice I heard hey guys how's it going this is what I'm gonna read today and I was just like yo this dude so I still wasn't freaked out right I still wasn't freaked out I was just like oh my god how can I get him you know what I mean so I have a fan page on Facebook and he followed my fan page so I went on his page and I video chatted one day and I hit the video chat and I'm like hey how's it going and he's like oh my gosh you really called me I'm such a fan I really adore you you know blah 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 so I had a guy um that I said that I was dating right so I said oh you know I just want to say thank you so much for all your support on my endeavors and my channel and stuff and the guy who I had he was like yeah he was like um he got on you know got on the camera he was like yeah you know I'm really glad that you support uh mm. <laughs> He was like, yeah, I'm really glad that you support my baby's channel. You know, I love her. I think she's great. As soon as he saw that I had a boyfriend next to me and he was able to see the boyfriend, he was like, oh, I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I was like, well, you know, I don't post everything about my life on my youtube channel so you know that's something that i wanted to keep private but i was telling my boyfriend how you know um you sent you sent the book and how you are really like a fan of you know a fan of me and we both just wanted to thank you together that's why i called you he was like oh well no problem and he was like um i gotta go okay so he got off the phone got off the video check so ever since he saw I had a boyfriend you know he wasn't comment I'm gonna say he wasn't commenting on my lives as much I know he was still there watching but like it wasn't comments all the time like oh you're so beautiful or I like your hair that way hey Oh, I like your hair that way. And I was saying to myself, what can I do to get back? And like, you know, what can I do to get back at him? And I was like, y'all, I'm about to write about, I was like, I'm about to write about my experience with this, um, you know, stalker. And everybody was like, oh, yeah write a book about it i'm gonna buy it that's gonna be a bestseller 
like oh my gosh that's gonna be lit and I wrote I wrote the moderator um you know and to those that don't go live um Chris if you if you look closely on the cover of the moderator you see how life with me so has the wrench next to her name that's pretty much what it is they have a wrench next to next to their name so he had a wrench next to his name because I made him the moderator. So I, I, that's how um, I wrote the moderator based on, you know, that stalker's experience. But at the same time, you know, it's a fiction book. So a lot of it was fabricated, but there are definitely some, you know, true life elements, um, you know, to the story. Like, yeah. And it was, it was, it was getting weird to the point where he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to visit, um, visit Delaware. And I was like, why would you visit Delaware if you live in California? And he was like, oh, you know, I always wanted to see what Delaware was like. Oh, you make people a moderator. I didn't know that. I was wondering how I was a moderator last time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you make people a moderator so when you go live and you know you see people that chat with you and like you know when you chat with people and you talk all the time and you grow to you know in a sense um trust them you know what I'm saying um <laughs> you said I thought it was first come first serve no so when you go to trust people who on your lives or interact with you a lot you make them a moderator of your channel and what you can do as a moderator for example if a troll came on and was like oh crystal you big head mfer you could like block them from my channel or remove them from the chat i thought the wrench meant that they had a thousand subs or more <laughs> Yo, y'all are crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Look, she said, okay, cool. Now I know my role. <laughs> y'all better read the moderator then, okay? So y'all can, I'm going to put y'all on game in the book. Yeah. <laughs> so look, so the people that were really heavy on my channel, I, I use them as characters, right? Now, I did this for two reasons. One was for us, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, my God. What am I really bad at? A marketing, marketing and promotion, right? So some of the people that was really into my channel at the time, I used their names, their YouTube names in the book. And... <laughs> You know, they really enjoyed it. I got everybody's permission, written consent, of course, to use their YouTube name in the book. So they were really excited to read it, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm using some of my subscribers' names in the book. And, you know, this book is about to be a bestseller. It's about to be lit, y'all. Let me tell you something. When the book came out, mind you, I did my best to promote, market this book to the best of my ability. And I mean, YouTube is a popping site, right? It's definitely a money maker if you figure out how to use it the right way. So, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's locked up. People can't make one of us. <laughs>
He probably getting frustrated because he don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all probably getting frustrated because y'all probably like, oh my God, make me a moderator already so I can. <laughs> Yo, but anyway, so the moderator comes out, right? You know, I put the cut. Oh, I put the cover out and everything, right, you guys? So the book is out. The book comes out. Let me tell y'all. First day, this book sold five copies, y'all. I'm telling you, when, when people say struggling artist, that is exactly what they mean. A struggling artist. the book so not a lot now mistakenly so not mistakenly so even though it did not sell a lot you know I've been writing since I was 15 um, I've been a published writer uh, since about 2005 if we count like my poems and my short stories but like with books I've been a published writer since 2008 so I put out so many books so much that some people, um, when they hear I got a new book coming out, it's just like, oh, okay, she got a new book coming out. Like, whoop, whoop de woo you know what I mean? But, like, to those loyal readers, they be like, oh, my God, you got a new book coming. I'm about to order it. Which book is your best seller? Mm. My first book about my life, which is called Through Her Eyes. So I have been through some things, you guys. <laughs> he said, I thought the rich men they had work to do. The first, yeah, the best seller is um, my first book, Through Her Eyes, because that's a story about my life. Um, I talk about, like, the different heartbreaks that I've been through. Um, I've talk, I talked about my mom being an addict I talk about um in that book I talk about my mom being an addict I talk about being bullied and teased in school I talk about being molested when I was a child I talk about having so many heartbreaks um yeah y'all I was I was engaged before um ooh, I talk about it all and a lot now that was a bestseller because a lot of my family wanted to read about it to see if they were in the book and <laughs> the guy that I was engaged to um so like, I guess I'll give a little backstory about through her eyes um the guy that I was engaged to he was married at the time and I did not know it um Mind you, I met his family, I met his children, um, you know, I met everybody, so when I found out he was married, I didn't think anything of it. I even met his wife at the time, and she's just like, she had her own boyfriend, so I'm thinking like, okay, you know, <clears throat> and when I had, y'all, kid you not, when I had my engagement ring on, this is not my engagement ring, I'm just um dramatics <laughs> semantics if you will when i had my ring on my finger and we had thanks i think we had thanksgiving or chris we had christmas we had christmas together and i went to his mom's house for christmas and his wife dropped the kids off at his mom's and i had said hey i'm not gonna put her name out there but i said hey such and such how you doing she was like, oh, hey, Crystal. And she looked at my finger and she said, oh, y'all getting married? And I'm like, yeah. And she was like, well, congratulations. And that was it. Now, I'm thinking she bitter because he moved, you know, 
he about to get married soon. She not married. You know, she not married again. Like, but mind you, I never knew that they were married. Period. Like, I'm around this dude's family and everything. This is how, this is how you know, excuse my French to some of y'all that don't like cursing. But this is how you know family ain't shit. Now, when you do dirt, your family will stick up for you whether you right or wrong. Most family will. So, I'm in this, his mom, I'm in this woman's house, I'm around this man's family, his grandmother, his aunts, his brother, his kids. I'm literally thinking I'm about to be the missus, and this fool is still legally married. So, I have my little ring on, I'm psyched, right? Mind you, he met my family, everybody, cool, whoop de woo Man, you guys, my best friend at the time, we went wedding dress hunting. I'm trying on wedding dresses, you guys. Um, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to get on a budget to pay for a wedding dress. Mind you, I'm only like 21, 22. So I'm still in college. You know, still fresh in college at that. Like, I'm in college. I'm working full time. I'm trying to budget to pay for a wedding, you guys. And I am like a complete fool without knowing that I'm boo-boo the fool. And this guy planning his whole wedding part. Like, you know, his groomsman and best man and everything like that, right? Like, literally planning with me, y'all. Mind you. This dude asked my dad permission. Okay. So it's not like I'm making it up in my head that I'm engaged to this man. In my mind, I'm about to get married. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, let me tell you. I don't know if him and if him and his mother got into it really bad one day or what. But I called asking for him one day. Because he lived with his mom because he wasn't with the baby mom, a.k.a. the wife anymore, right? Y'all, I call her, I call her house to ask for him. So, I'm going to give y'all the character's name, okay? I named his character Lay. So, I said to his mom, I said, hi, Miss um, Lay's mom. Can I speak to Lay? She was like, you want to speak to Lay? I said, yes, ma'am. She was like, don't call my phone no more. What? I said, um, Miss Lay is Crystal. I know who you are. What? Mind you, before he asked me to marry him, we were together for a year. A year. Okay. She don't call my phone no more. Okay, now, Lay told me his mom was schizophrenic. Lay told me his mom was schizophrenic. So he, he told me in the beginning, if my, if my mom ever look at you the wrong way or if she ever say something smart under her breath, she don't mean no harm. She probably ain't take her medicine. This is what he told me. My boo-boo the fool self is like, oh, okay. So when we at Christmas dinner and everything like that, right? I ain't thinking nothing of it. I'm thinking, all right, well, she ain't take her medicine. Covering his back. Girl, okay. So his mom and I now that you <laughs> my boo-boo myself. Now that like now that it's you know, everything's passed and done and over with and everything. I start to see things. You know, you realize stuff from a different angle. His mom, sometimes she was cool with me. Very nice and respectful. On the, on, on the other hand, sometimes she was rude to me. Would roll her eyes and just be like, mm, Lay, you ain't right. Lay, you ain't right. And he had proposed to me on my birthday, which is December 18th exactly a week from Christmas so it was no surprise that 
you know, I spent part of Christmas, we spent part of Christmas with my family. My grandmother was living at the time, so like all the family was close then. A lot of my family, you know, was still living. I lost a lot of my immediate family, my grandmother, my brother, my great grandmother and my cousin. <clears throat> I lost all of them within a year of each other after me and Lay broke up. So, okay, so, you know, my family's there, my mom, blah, 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 we all chilling. So we spend part of the Christmas at my house, and then the other part of Christmas, we go on to his family's house in Chester. So, she was like, the mom kept saying like, oh, um, y'all getting married? So I was like, yeah, you know me, I'm excited, I'm happy, I'm like, hey, you know. I'm thinking I'm making something of myself. I'm working full time. I got a church man. Huh. Got me a good man. I got my ring. She like, oh, let me see your ring. Oh, that's really cute. So she goes, Lay, why didn't you tell me? She goes, Lay, why didn't you tell me that, um, you were going to get the ring sized for Crystal. I'm like, what's wrong with the ring, you know? He was like, well, Mom, you told me. He was like, well, Mom, you told me when I was ready to get married again that, you know, I could take the ring and get it sized. She was like, yeah, but really? And the subject was, he changed the subject. So the ring that I had was his mom's engagement ring. Now, Lay's dad passed away. So Lay's mom wanted Lay to have the ring for when, you know, he got married. <sighs> Y'all... When this lady said, don't call my phone no more and hung up, you know, that's fuel to the fire. At this point, I need to know what's going on with the chick. She ain't take her medicine. I don't know. I'm going to call back. So I said, hey, Miss Lay, um, you know, is, is Lay there? He's married. Click. What? Oh, this lady really crazy. Mind you, I'm thinking nothing of it. We had been together for a whole year before he asked me to marry him. I've been to family events. I've been around the baby mom, the baby mom at this point of what I'm thinking. So I calls back again. Right. I calls back again. I'm like, hey. Lay answers the phone this time. So I'm like, yo, like. Did you give your mom her medicine? All I hear in the background. You need to tell her that you're still married, that you're not marrying her. You need to tell her. So at this point, reality is setting in. I break down in tears at this point. And my mom is next to me. So my mom like, well, why are you crying? I said, mom, his... His mom just like yelled in the phone that he's married. My mom like, what? So my mom calls from her phone. So his mom and my mom talk on the phone. So my mom was like, well, did you take your medicine? His mom like, medicine? What you mean? So she was like, well, he told us. Mind you, my moms will get down to the bottom of it real quick. My mom was like, well, he told us you were schizophrenic. And that you're crazy. So his mom was like, ain't nothing crazy about me. She said, my son is still legally married. That's why I don't approve of him not only being with your daughter, but calls himself marrying your daughter. She said, if they try to get married, he's going to go to jail because he's still legally married. My mom like, what? Mind you, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm just sitting uh, in my room, just hysterics, bawling my eyes out. 
So my mom was like, well, wait a minute. They've been together all this time. So why didn't you ever say anything before? She said, because my son was supposed to tell her when they met that he was still legally married to his wife. She said, now, even though they both moved on physically, legally, they're both still married. And I don't condone what he doing. And I don't condone what the wife is doing until they get a divorce. Yes. <laughs> So, so she was like, she said, look, she said, um, I, I really like Crystal. I think Crystal has a bright future ahead of her. She said, I don't think my son is for Crystal. She said, because my son is a dog. So my mom said, well, if you knew how your son was, why would you allow it to go on for but so long? And not only that. Our side of the family is in the dark and thinking that this guy is a stand-up guy. So she said, I, she said, my son is grown. I told my son, you got to make your own decisions. And that karma comes around. She was like, that's what I told my son. Y'all, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I feel so stupid. My mom said, don't feel stupid. You didn't know. Mind you, my mom holding me. My mom crying with me. I'm like, Mom, I don't want to be with him no more. My mom was like, well, you really can't be with him. Not the way you think you should be with him because he's legally married. So I'm like, Mom, I'm, mind you, I'm like, yes. I'm just bawling my eyes out at this point because, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of a-holes. I mean, I clearly he was an a-hole too, but I'm just saying like, you know, when you're still young and you're still in a, a part of finding yourself and learning your self-worth and learning who you are as a woman and, you know, you think you're doing the right things, um, you know, when you meet somebody that seems to want the same things you want and have it together and everything like that. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, you know, this is my soulmate, like my family likes him, his family likes me. Like, girl, did he? And I was just, I took the ring off. I was like, Mom, I just, I can't do this. And he steady calling my phone. My mom like, uh-uh, don't, don't answer him. Don't answer him. So I didn't talk to him anymore. And my mom was like, well, you going to give him his ring back? I said, no. She said, well, the mom wants the ring back because she said it's her ring. I said, that ain't my fault. I said, I'm going to keep it. So at the time, my mom was still an addict and still getting high. So my mom was like, well, let's pawn it. So my, my okay, so an addict, they're going to try and get this to get their score regardless. So my mom like let's pawn it so i'm like no i don't want to pawn it so i put it i thought i put it up in a safe place y'all my mom ended up taking the ring and, and selling it for drugs i keep it all the way honest that's what she ended up doing with the ring so ring's gone i'm heartbroken mind you i still ain't said nothing to him it took me honestly you guys I finally forgave him last year. Um, no, I forgave him two years ago. I spoke to him last year because he apologized to me last year. And I'm going to tell you why he apologized. Not because he was married. So after I find out he's married, I break up with him and everything like that. You know, we're not together. I move on with my life. Whoop -de -whoop. Start dating again. I'm in college working full time and maybe a year after my grandmother passed away my grandma passed in 05 so maybe like a couple mm, a year or two after my grandma passed away I get this uh knock on the door from Lay <clears throat> so I answer the door and it's him and I'm like um what do you want what do you want so yeah it took him a whole couple years to resurface so he resurfaces and 
he goes, um, I want to say I'm sorry. You know, I still love you. I haven't been with anybody since we broke up. And by the way, this is divorce papers, right? <laughs> For some dramatics. This is divorce papers. And, and his... So divorce papers and his divorce decree. So he's like, I'm not married anymore. You know, I'm single. I love you. I want you back. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mind you, the guy I was dating, I had just stopped talking, stopped dating. So I'm like, okay, well, he's divorced now, so I guess it's okay. And wrong, you guys. But I take him back, right? He's divorced now. I take him back. I'm like, look, I'm not trying to get married. We can just date. I'm cool with that. I'm not thinking marriage or anything like that. So I ended up moving in my first apartment. So I moved. He helps me move, everything like that. And maybe a year into the start over or the second relationship, if you will. A year into the second relationship, um, I ended up getting a book deal. My first book deal for the book that I'm talking about, Through Her Eyes. And he's there. And... He's like, oh, I'm so proud of you. You know, you got this book deal. Um, I'm like, okay. So the publisher was like, yo, we want to publish this book. We really like it. Um, the book wasn't finished. He was like, the publisher was like, when are you going to finish the book? I said, I'm going to finish the book. He was like, as soon as you finish the book, I want to get it published. Like, I love it. I love the story. I love the characters. I love everything. Okay. Y'all. Um. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, you guys. All right. My period's late. Right? Okay. So, I'm thinking I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, my period's late. Mind you, we were trying. So, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to get some tests. So, he like, okay, cool. I tell my mom, mom, I might be pregnant. You got to get clean off the drugs now because... I need help. I'm going to need help with this baby. <laughs> I'm going to need help with this baby. Like, you know, my mom like, all right, you know, say no more. Like, you know, can y'all drop me off at rehab? You know, like, I'm, I'm ready to get clean. Like, I got to help my, you know, my daughter having my baby having a baby. You know, everybody all excited, right? Yeah. Period never came on. Um, pregnancy tests are popping up negative. So I go to the doctor. I'm like, is anything wrong with me? The doctor's like, no, everything's fine. Like, your eggs are good. You can still carry, but you're not pregnant. So I said, well, why is, why is my period not here? So my, my OB is like, oh, well, have you been under a lot of stress lately? And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, mind you, I'm in school. I'm in school full time and I'm working full time. So the doctor's like, well, you know, stress can make you miss a period if you're under a lot of stress. Um, you know, your period may just show up super late. Like, don't be surprised. So I'm like, OK, so I'm studying for exams, working full time, you know, everything like that. So I'm like, mom, like the doctor said I'm not pregnant. You know, the blood test came back negative. The urine test came back negative. Like, I don't know what's going on. So my mom, like, well, calm your body down or whatever. You know, give it, you know, my mom's just, because I always wanted to be a mom. So my mom's just going to think everything but the best, period. Like, 
you know, my mom's like, well, maybe you're not that far along yet to where it's not showing up. You know, just relax because you can have a miscarriage. Don't stress. So I'm like, all right, cool. So take my exams and everything. Woosa. Behold, my period comes on. <laughs> Lay. Oh, babe, don't worry about it. We'll keep trying. Y'all, we go to breakfast. Me, him, and his brother, we go to breakfast. Man, <laughs> we go to breakfast. And the brother was like, oh, um... You think it's too early to drink alcohol. So I said, yeah, it's like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Of course it's too early to drink alcohol. I said, I'm not drinking though because we trying to get pregnant. The brother's like, what? Yo, what you say? I said, oh, I'm not drinking because we're trying. The brother was like, trying for what? I said, we trying to have a baby. So the brother like, y'all trying to have a baby? I said, yeah, we're trying to have a baby. Like, what the, what the cluck? You know what I mean? Like, why are you looking at me like I got two heads or something? I'm looking at Lay. Lay just sitting there like this. Whole time, straight face. Not smiling, not looking sad. He just. Not looking at me though. So he looks at Lay. He's like, Lay. Really? So I said, Well, what's going on? Like, why why he act I said, Lay, why he acting like that? Lay ain't have nothing to say. So I'm like, All right, well, I ain't even hungry now. Like, I'm just ready to go home. At this point. So I didn't have a car at the time. Lay had his car. So Lay like yeah let's roll. So I ain't mind you I ain't say nothing the whole car ride home. I get in the house or whatever. Lay's brother texts me. And was like yo. I can't. I He was like look. He said Crystal. You cool people. We call each other bro and sis. I really like you. He was like but. My brother can't have kids. I said huh. He was like, my brother got a vasectomy after him and his ex-wife had their last child together. So, Lay had four kids. He said, after he had their last child, he got a vasectomy. Because they didn't want any more kids and they never thought that they would get a divorce from each other. He was like, I don't know why my brother is like stringing you along like what in the world so now I'm just bawling my eyes out again feeling so stupid so stupid and he's steady talking about oh Crystal we gonna try again don't worry about it next month it'll happen for sure next month it'll happen for sure y'all Mind you, I said, did you get a vasectomy? And he got quiet. I said, uh, did you get a vasectomy? Yes or no? So he goes, I see the way you look at my kids and I see how you are with my kids and... I can't have any more kids. I said, so you're making me think that something is wrong with my body. And you're you're steady telling me every month that I'm getting my period. Oh, it'll happen next month. Oh, don't worry about it. It'll, I said, you got me thinking something is wrong with me. And the whole time, you're blank shot the sharpshooter. Y'all, I was like, this too much. I said, I can't. I can't. But a part of me wasn't wasn't done yet. I was not done with this nut. 
So, I go to work. A mm, couple days later, whatever, I go to work. And I come home from work. All his stuff is gone from my apartment. So, we didn't live together, but, like, he has stuff at my apartment. All his stuff was at my apartment. And the whole time, he ended up, he left the final straw. He left me for another woman and married her. And the only reason I found out about it is because when Facebook really started popping, um, I was friends with his cousin, his female cousin on Facebook. And she posted the wedding picture of him and his new bride. Kid you not, y'all. Kid you not. So, he left me for the other woman and married her. And then, mm, some years later, he left her for somebody else and married her. So he reached out to me last year and apologized and was like, I'm sorry for everything. How are you trying to like, trying to quote unquote check up on me in a sense? He was like, oh, I see you finished the book. I see it came out. Yes, yes they can, girl. I'm I'm down for the Zoom. So he was like, um, he a goddamn Gemini. That's what he is. He a Gemini. Nah. <laughs> so he was just like, you know, how are you? How's your life? Do you have children? And I was like, mm, why do you want to know about me? And he was like, are you married? No, he was like, congratulations on getting married. And I was like, I got married? And he was like, yeah. So my my name on Facebook is Crystal Wrights, right? So he saw the last name Wrights and thought that was my married name. So he was like, oh, congratulations on getting married. I was like, I got married? Um, how did you heal and are you still in your healing process? So, this happened to me, India, when he left me for the other woman and married her, I was 23 years old, 23, I'm 36 now, and I have forgiven him, I mean, I've had other relationships since then, but they were not ones that I felt was as serious as ones with him, like meeting the family, you know, and I, I'll even say that far meeting the family, right? Um, I'm in therapy now. Um, you know, I talk about the relationships that I've been through and everything like that. Um, because of it, I do have severe, of course, you know, mistrust. Um, and that's just from, you know, not just men, but like my upbringing, like with my mom being an addict, um, you know, and I have, uh, abandonment issues, um, which is from, you know, things from my childhood and from, you know, him, that relationship, um, you know, because he just left, like, he never really broke up with, you know, broke up with me in a sense as far as like him and I having real closure, healthy closure. You know what I'm saying? Like he just left and went to another woman. So it was never like, oh, we're breaking up or I broke up with you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and what I think 
what what led him to reaching out to me last year was that you know his family does still talk about me in high regard and you know I think he realizes that the grass isn't so green on the other side years later so many years later um you know so like I forgave him but um trying to have a real and healthy relationship with someone now I'm definitely I learn a lot of coping mechanisms and strategies to not um have the new men that I meet suffer from the pain that he caused even though it was so long ago in my life it still had the biggest impact on me if that makes sense you know what I'm saying so oh my god yes so <clears throat> with like and it's so funny that we, you know, I, I don't mind talking about this at all. Um, it'll definitely be, you know, a book someday. But uh, in my last therapy session last week, we talked about my relationships with men. And we went through all of the men that I dealt with and everything like that. And my therapist said that I choose men that are charismatic and that because I'm a writer and because, you know, reading is my thing, writing is my thing, my love language is words of affirmation and I'm more equipped to believing what they say instead of their actions speaking for them. So moving forward in new relationships and future relationships even with people not just men i'm focused on or i'm learning to use the rational side of my brain and not so much the emotional side of my brain to where the emotional part i believe what they say you know what i'm saying instead of them showing me so like um, I dealt with a couple guys that would say, you know, oh, we're going to go on a date. We're going to go to the beach. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But their words and their actions don't match. They say it, but they don't display it. You know what I mean? And for a long time, I always believed what people said because... I figure if I'm not a liar and my word is my bond or, you know, I speak on what I say, I think people are like me and that they speak, you know, they're legit with what they say or they're going to do as they say, you know what I mean? Um, and I learn now with people and men, more so with men, you know, relationship wise, to pay attention to their patterns of behavior. And that was one of the reasons why I got into psychology and why I had got my doctorate in psychology as well, because I wanted to figure out what was it about me that was choosing the wrong men. You know what I mean? And now that I'm in therapy, it's all kind of coming full circle as to why I choose or chose the men that I chose you know and my therapist was just like you are an amazing woman and he was like you know I'm not gonna gas your head up but you know you're smart you're very beautiful you're very funny you have a great sense of humor he was like you know you just need to find the guy that is on your level and not the guy that you have to take care of because, you know, you don't want to be an enabler, right? So he was like, because the guy that you have, he said, don't choose the ones that are less than. Yes. He was like, don't choose the ones that you have to take care of. Just, this is so real, y'all. 
he was like, don't choose the men that you have to take care of or be in control of just to make yourself feel needed and feel wanted. Oh, <laughs> feel needed or feel wanted. He said, because when you do that, when you enable somebody who doesn't have to be responsible because you're being responsible for them or who doesn't have to be, you know, a man because you're taking care of everything. He was like, when you do that, you know, you get bored fast and your needs are not met. So like now you're on to the next thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And he was like, let me ask you with the men that you you feel like that you've dated, the patterns of behavior. He was like, do you move fast with them or do you slowly build? And I said, I can honestly say that with every guy that I have had an interest in or dated or whatever, it's always been an, a fast battle. And he was like, why do you think that is? I said, because although I am young, I said I was raised by my grandmother. So I have an old soul. I said, you know, my grandmother was with my grandfather. They weren't married, but you know, that was my grandfather. I said, my grandmother was with my grandfather. And when her children were addicts, you know, he didn't play that going on in his house. But once my grandfather died, my grandmother became an enabler and would let them not be responsible, would let them not be a parent to their children because my grandmother was raising us, me and my cousin, you know, her kids' kids. My grandmother was raising us. So... They didn't have to worry about financially taking care of us, feeding us, clothing us, because my grandma was doing it. So they were, as sad as it is to say, able to be an addict, get high, steal, steal money. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was in the house or, you know, in the accounts, they were able to steal money to get the drugs or, you know steal the jewelry to get the drugs like even though she knew that they were doing it because she was such an enabler there was no consequence for them for their actions so when I became an adult you know I am the responsible one I'm a no-nonsense person. I'm very strict in a sense. I'm very structured in a sense. You know what I mean? Like, um, like I tell people like, oh, this is what you got to do. You got to be responsible. You got to do this. You know, ain't nobody going to take care of you. I say stuff like that because I don't want to be an enabler. But in the same sense, right? Because I come from an enabling household my grandmother right doing everything taking care of everything taking care of everyone on the flip side although I have that strong core no nonsense mentality at times when it came to a man I was choosing those that were less than right and when I say less than I mean not on the same level and page as I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, choosing those that were less than. I started to become an enabler. You know, I had dated a guy for eight months that didn't work. Um, I forced the issue, but if he didn't do it, I still held things down because I had to. <clears throat> because at the same time, it was my, you know, he was living with me. It was my apartment. So I had to make sure I was paying everything. But he wasn't, and he was still around. But it took him, hold up, I'll take a drink real quick. What made me leave that nut alone for eight, we only dated for eight months. But like I said, sometimes you can have, 
you can date somebody for a long time or you could date somebody for a short time and they have the biggest impact on your life. What made me leave the guy for eight months, mind you, let's be honest, he was a bum. He didn't work. He's, <laughs> I'm going to keep it real, y'all. He slang that dick, right? The dick was good. And I didn't want to be alone, right? So I, so I dealt with it. What made me leave him was that he stole money from me. He stole money from me. Now, in my mind, the trigger of him stealing money from me is reminding me of my childhood when my mom and my my other addicted family members would steal money from me steal jewelry from me steal whatever you know what I'm saying from me so now because that instance is bringing back a trigger from me from my childhood that I'm not not tolerating mind you I done tolerated him being a bum I done tolerated him you know, not having a place to live, not wanting to work, not being responsible. I tolerated that. But because it was something that I didn't tolerate, him taking money from me, and he slapped me in my face, right? Now you got to go. Mind you, you should have ne <clears throat> never came. <clears throat> Mind you, you should have never came. You should have never even been in my life, period. But because you do something that is triggering and familiar to me, that is something from my past that I know is not tolerated for me. Now you got to go. Y'all, let me tell you. <clears throat> that boy slapped me in my face. Mind you, I'm 4'11". Y'all know I'm small. This dude's 6'4". And he slapped me in my face. You talking, it was like, it was like a Muhammad Ali, y'all. It was like a Muhammad Ali and Tyson fight. I don't even know if they fought each other, but I'm just saying because they boxers. It was like a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, okay. Like, now, <laughs> I might be little. I might got little hands, but I know how to use what I got. And he slapped me in my face. Y'all, we got the fighting. And he looking like, oh, snap. Like, yo, she ain't scared of me. She know how to fight. I don't want to hit her no more. I don't even want no, you know, I don't even want to smoke. So I dealt with that situation. I had to call, of course, call the cops. Get a restraining order because he started stalking me. So that whole ordeal happened. And I was just like, tag, like Crystal, you just go from sugar to shit. Like with these dudes. And what made me start going to therapy, honestly, was that uh, I started to have anxiety at one of my jobs. And... Because it was a toxic job. And I mean, I'm in a toxic job now. And that's another thing. Like, what the heck is going on that I'm like in these toxic situations in my adult life? And, you know, so of course, going to therapy and talking about it, you got to take it all the way back to the beginning, to the childhood to figure out what's going on. But yeah, man, I just, y'all. When them, when those familiar triggers from your childhood or from your past pop up in your present, you are just like, no, like, I am not dealing with this. And I know I told y'all a couple weeks ago when I did a video about a guy that I met and like, I was all giddy and excited about him and we started, we were talking to like, six in the morning and everything like that y'all i done cut him off already i found out he was an addict and i just whoop, nope 
nope, I am good. That was another trigger that came up. I said, no. But I had literally just spoke to my therapist and I was just like, look, let me tell you. So he's like, how do you meet these guys? And I told him, I was like, online, in person, you know. And he was like, they're charismatic guys. They're very charming and easy on the eyes and, you know, know how to talk. And I was like, yep. And he said, okay. He said, he said, keep trying. He said, I love, he said, I love that you're not giving up on love. He was like, I'm glad you haven't, you know, hardened your heart to where you throw in a towel. I was like, no, because I know what I deserve. Like. I just got to go through all the rotten apples before I get that nice sweet one, you know. And he was like, okay, good. And he was like, you know, telling me like go online, go on dating profiles where you have to pay. Um, you know, he was just like, he was like, it's not you. He said, it's just what you keep coming in contact with. And I was like, yeah. I said, and I'm also going to focus on the slow build and not like you know moving fast he was like uh, he was like you know what you need to do he was like you know you're gonna get there and I was just like okay um let me see has therapy been helping your anxiety yes therapy does help my anxiety um and honestly you guys like I'm on a very very low dose of anxiety medication but I'm prayer works uh taking slow breaths helps um all of that let me see i'm reading comments yeah i'm glad i have oh yes cat she said you're a strong person crystal even now you being able to talk about this without being emotion she shows how far you've come Oh my God, absolutely, because I would just ball out at the drop of a dime. Like, I used to be the person that would, like, go on his profile and just be like, what is he doing? You know, I've just been listening. I'm glad to hear you. Yes, diving into my why. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Your mom called him ragweeds. <laughs> Ah, the slow build is sweeter absolutely and you know also also in therapy my therapist asked me why did I felt like I was moving fast so I told you guys how I was raised by my grandmother so I have an old soul in a sense and I said the reason why I always move fast is because I feel like I don't have a lot of time left not saying that I'm going to die or anything like that. It's nothing about death at all. But like with me wanting to be a mom, I said, I feel like, you know, my biological clock is ticking and, you know, I don't want any issues when I'm ready to get pregnant. You know, I said, so I felt like, you know, my fa all, all of the women in my family had their children in their teens, right? very young and I didn't because my grandmother wasn't having it um and I just I'll always listen you know what I mean if you tell me I can't go outside I'm not gonna go outside that don't mean I won't like sneak you in the house but I ain't outside either you know I used to always try and bend the rules go I'm just being honest but I said I felt like I didn't have a lot of time left because I was like, you know, I do want to have kids. I feel like I got a ticking clock. And I feel like I've created this system in a sense in my mind that if I'm not married or have kids or whatever by a certain age, like, I don't want to miss my area of opportunity or my window of time. And he was like, I can understand that. He said, but, you know, there are people that get married at age 80. He said it might be later in their life, but they still have the experience. And he was like, there are women that are in their 40s that get pregnant with no problem. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But like I said, when I think about people that I went to school with and knowing like one of my good friends has a 19 year old daughter or 
some people that I know that are my age that are grandparents and I don't have children yet and he was just like you know he was like you can't focus on what other people are doing and he was like just because they have those things don't mean that they want that they wanted their life to be that way and I'm like yeah I guess but he had told me to take another social media break he was like, do you think you could be off social media for a year? And I was like, Facebook, yeah. I said, not YouTube. What? <laughs> I said, that's my side hustle. He was like, okay. He was like, I just, he was like, you know, I just don't want you to create envy from people in your from people that you have relationships with. He said, I don't want you to create envy and jealousy. I want you to be able to be happy for people that achieve things that you haven't achieved yet in life. That's what he said. And I was like, I understand. Like when you put it that way, like I understand where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Yes, comparison is the killer of joy. You better say it. Now we see why you might just want baby August and not the husband, but hopefully. Yes, yes. That is why I want my baby. I want August. But y'all, I'm a huge August Alcina fan, so that's where I got August from. But, you know. And yeah, and I mean, like, you know, I really, really... <laughs> So bad want to be a mom, but I don't want to willingly be a single mom. So that's why I'm always on the fence of, do I just go ahead and get artificially inseminated? Um, you know, and just have my baby and when the guy comes, he just have to accept August, you know, for what it is. I don't know, but... I don't know y'all but my friend that um yes my friend that is a lesbian she was just like <laughs> so funny she's she's such a sweetheart this she gave me she was the one that gave me this um for a, when I wasn't feeling good she brought me this and some wine she said, um, she was like, whenever you're ready to go to the sperm bank, I'll be glad to be your girlfriend so we can get your sperm so you can have your baby. Because did y'all know that if you are in a lesbian relationship that you get your, you get the sperm for free? Did y'all know that? I said... I told my mom, I said, Mom, if you see me holding hands with a girl and you see me kissing a girl's cheek and you see her kissing my cheek and we in public, don't ask questions. My mom said, I'm going to just pretend I don't even know you. I said, my girl. And we cracked up. But did y'all know lesbian couples get free sperm? What? Who knew? Who knew? I'm telling you, yo, when the sperm bank, the clinic told me that. I was like, well, wait a minute. Now, if I choose to get artificially inseminated by myself and go up there and go through the motions and everything like that, um, it's $2,000, y'all. $2,000. Now, I got $2,145 right here. I'm just saying now. I'm joking. I'm joking, you guys. But, like, what? Mmm. Mmm. That's all I'm going to... Mmm. That's all I'm going to say. That's what I be like. Do y'all take ones? <laughs> but I couldn't 
couldn't believe that. When 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 they told me that, I said, "Oh, that's discrimination, man, for real." Like <laughs> You said, "Ooh, come again, LOL, free." It's right. Free. I just said, "God darn." RJ in his house, y'all. I'm gonna show you R. I'm gonna show you RJ in his house. He looks so cute. I love him. I love to see when he goes in his house that my mom bought him. You in your house, man? You like it in there? Can I come in there? You got room for me? Can I come in? Knock, knock. Is RJ home? RJ, where are you? Is RJ home? Y'all, he know he hear me. He ignore me. Can I come over, RJ? Can I visit you at your house? Huh? Can I visit? Knock, knock. Is RJ home? There he is. Hi, RJ. Hi, Pooh. <laughs> he is a mess. All right, go back in your house. Go ahead. Y'all hear that noise? RJ got a hairball. He is a mess. Gotta cook some dinner, Crystal, but have a beautiful Sunday, friend. Yes, you too. What are you cooking? Girl, I had cat. I had a burrito and some chicken fingers and french fries from this Mexican spot. I know I wasn't supposed to. I'm, I know I'm supposed to be cooking. I know. I'm supposed to be cooking. I'm going to cook tomorrow. I'm making barbecue chicken tomorrow. But yeah, y'all, I've been on here for like two hours. I think I am going to leave this live up as well because we were having some good conversation. And I really enjoy, you know, the learning aspect of my lives. But if y'all want to read more about Lay, you got to buy my book Through Her Eyes by Crystal. And if you want to learn more about Artie, who is the stalker, my YouTube stalker, you have to buy The Moderator by Crystal Diggs. But you guys, I am going to get off of here. I'm going to do something with this money, figure it out. I don't know, you guys. And I will talk to you guys later. Be blessed. Have an amazing Sunday. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.